Today I'm going to show you how you can achieve this really cool style of photography plus artwork extremely fast in Procreate. I'm going to take you through all of the steps in this video, including a quick hack on how to get clean masks out of complex photography within seconds using your iPad, and then be able to create a sense of depth with your art by drawing underneath and above your photography elements back in Procreate. So grab your iPad, your favorite photo, and let's get started. All right, in order to get this effect started, first and foremost, we need to find the image that we want to work with. I already have one photo right here. It's a still frame of something in motion. You can use something that looks like this, that has like a some kind of a motion applied to it, which I think it looks, it works really well with this technique, or you can find just like a still portrait, something that doesn't seem like it's moving when the photo was taken. You can do that as well, but I really recommend trying to do something that has some sort of a motion as in this reference right here. So what we're going to do first and foremost, we're gonna tap on the camera roll app. We're going to tap on the little three dots here, and then we're just gonna hit copy. Now I'm gonna go back into Procreate right here. And when I tap on the plus icon, Procreate is asking me if I want to paste from my photos, in which I'm going to say allow. So now that I've done that, it shows to me a little clipboard option right here, just underneath screen size. I'm gonna tap on that option, and now I have my photo brought into a new canvas and Procreate into a single layer. Now the next step is that I will now bring my Photos app into the side here of Procreate so that I can see both at the same time. And now, magically, I'm going to tap and hold and bring this layer onto my canvas here in Procreate, bringing as a new layer. And I can try to position this a little bit better, but don't worry so much because right now we have both apps open. It's a little hard, as you can see here, to see the rest of my UI tools that are usually on the left side. So I'm just going to use the brush tool just to exit this stage, but knowing that now going to the brush panel, I have two layers. One, we have brought in the talent over Procreate into a, a layer with alpha. And secondly, we now have our photo. So now I'm just going to slide this to the right, go back fully here into Procreate. And now if I zoom in and I turn off the talent in the photo here, the woman, you see that there's like a little bit of a movement. And that means that the um, image with an alpha that we brought in is not fully, fully al aligned with a photo at the bottom. I'm gonna use the move tool and just try to reposition like so. And it might be like a little bit off, as you can see, like it feels like it's a pixel off. So I'm just gonna try to bring this down very, very little like this much maybe. And let's take another look. And let me try this again. Something like this maybe. And now it is perfectly aligned between the alpha version and the picture that's underneath. Now really what we want to do on the bottom layer, I'm just going to slide this to the left and I'm going to lock that layer. That's because it's our background. We really don't wanna mess with that. We just wanna have that protected. And now I'm going to tap uh, to create a new layer on the plus icon right there, to create a new layer between the background plate and the foreground element, which is our talent. Now, everything that we create is going to look like it lives within the scene. So back into the color menu, I'm just going to choose a color palette here to be uh, our hero color palette. So in this case here, I'm just gonna choose this summer palette to be our default. And now when I go back into uh, my values or my colors, they're always going to be sitting there. So the very first thing that I wanna do, I'm going to select this color right here. And then on my brush menu, I'm gonna be using just like a flat uh, studio pen that I have. I'm gonna make a big circle right about here. Move this perhaps a little bit like so. Um, I wanna make sure that it kind of catches a little bit of these rocks and I will explain why in a little bit. So something like this, maybe a little bit bigger. 
So something like that seems fine. And I'm going to color drag and paint that circle. Now we're going to create a new layer. And now using a brush that has uh, pressure applied to it, I'm going to choose like one of my colors here. It could be the green one, for example, and make sure this is a little bigger. And I'm just going to trace some curves, some like really nice pathways. I'm going to create one here, create another color. Let's choose maybe yellow this time and then drag it over. Um, this one felt like a little bit bigger. So maybe something like this create a new color and maybe now it's going to be a blue one. Something like that. And now creating a new color. Um, you can just keep going as much as, as you want. Uh, I might go with purple actually. Here we go. So now that we have all of that, we're going to create a new layer. And now perhaps with yellow selected, I am just going to uh, put some dots on the screen here. Trying to populate. And I'm also going to make sure that this layer is sitting on top of our talent. So now some of these dots, as you can see, are also um, giving this feeling that the, the composition has dimension. There are things that are behind our talent. There are things that are in front of our talent. And uh, we're also going to be playing with a circle that I just did as the very first layer. And you're going to see how it all comes together at the very, very end. So I'm going to create another layer, change colors here a little bit. Maybe it is uh, this really nice um, peach color that we have. A couple more dots here and there. Just spreading it around. And now I'm going to create a new layer. And maybe we're going to go into, uh, maybe we go back into green. And I will use now a water marker brush just to trace some lines, just to give more of a feeling of motion to this. So just doing some lines here and there. Okay. And now I will create a new layer and this time let's make it yellow and I'm going to just redu reduce the brush here a little bit more and we're going to be creating some triangles such as this one. I'm going to create another one maybe here and one more maybe bigger over here. Here we go. For some of these triangles, as you can see, I am drawing the shape. Then I, I press with one finger uh, onto the surface of my canvas, and that transforms into uh, one of my pre-existing shapes that we can choose here in Procreate, such as a triangle, quadrilateral, or polyline. And of course, I do want a triangle because it allows me, it gives me the option to change things a bit. And then I can just use my brush tool to paint. Um, so here we go. And finally, I'm just going to create one last layer. And perhaps that is a peach layer still with a water marker. And I'm just going to do some really cool lines that could perhaps run across this uh, composition. Um, doesn't really, uh, you don't really need to think too much about this thing. Uh, it's really an exercise in creativity and just doing things that look cool, whatever, whatever looks cool for you. Um, that's what we're doing here today. And I think this last one was not aligned. So making sure this, this one is aligned and maybe I do one more line very close to this first one, something like so. And now just as final touches, I'm just going to go on the circle right here. I'm going to tap on the little uh, icon here, which represents the blend mode and also to access the opacity of a layer. I'm going to reduce this to 46%. And now, as you can see, we can see that the circle is revealing that bottom layer, which we had, which was the background that we've locked. 
as you can also see there's like a little bit of rocks and things that were being obscured by this circle so now we're going to add this this really nice effect of something that's like behind but also in front of certain elements we're going to tap on our circle and select the option mask so mask that's sitting on top here is really only affecting our circle and it works in a way that it uses pure black to obscure things and pure white a pure white value to reveal things only when we have the layer mask selected so right now as you can see we have a pure black as my values are all zero here on the sliders of R, G, and B. and for the kind of brush that we're going to be using i'm going to be using a studio pen that's not too too big and that's because i want to really go as close as possible and i'm just going to paint that and this is one of the beautiful things about procreate and it's called non-destructive way of working because i have a layer mask selected i'm not really deleting the pixels of my circle if i change my mind down the road and i actually want to have the circle full full on all the way i can just go here and i can turn off my layer mask and the circle still there i really love playing or working whenever i'm working in procreate i love working in this sense because i know that anything that i'm doing I'm not really wasting it or losing it forever because as we know once we save and procreate we do lose our history our undo uh, undo levels uh, it's not the same as uh, some other um, software that we may be using so I'm going to be uh, making a few more masks here to review a couple more rocks such as these uh, three ones and now if I go back into my layers panel tap on the opacity on the little icon and bring it to 100%, I can now see that these rocks feel like they are in front of our main circle, that main graphic. And look how cool uh, does the composition looks like if you actually zoom in as much as possible as well. One last note that I just wanna say here, like some final, final touches is that, as you can see in this mask, it's kind of revealing a little bit of the blue in, in, in the sky. Sometimes you may want to tweak things so you can actually also have this layer mask selected, go into the adjustments menu and go into Gaussian blur and you can add a little bit of softness into the mask you just created. In this case here, I'm applying about 2% of blur, like nothing really crazy. And they may sometimes help with uh, whatever you're trying to do here. I'm also going to uh, just tap and hold on the black color to switch it to a pure white color and now using uh, perhaps even a soft brush, but a very, very small size. I can go back in and I can repaint that edge, making sure the blue is gone, right? That blue outline that we see, which makes things much more realistic and um, it just looks it more convincing per se. We can see there's a little bit here so of that outline. So I'm going to make this super, super small and paint the rock as well right here and on this edge there you go and then an extreme value of black because I can see that the blur actually made the edge of the circle kind of come out right there and now just one last thing is that um although this technique is really really cool and as we're using something really fast that allows us to instantly cut off pictures into separate layers with the use of the iOS features. Um, I wanna show you something really quickly, which is if I go here at the very bottom and I make uh, another circle, so I'm just gonna make the circle and drop a color. As you can see sometimes, or most of the time, iOS is not gonna give you an exact precise mask. As you can see here, it's leaking some of the sky over to the main talent. It's not like perfectly cut off. You can even see a little bit of this blue outline from the sky once again into the cutoff layer. So all that we need to do is find our talent layer, our top layer, our foreground layer. I'm gonna tap on that one and also select mask. And now using a brush, that's gonna be my studio pen, something that doesn't have a lot of uh, feather at the moment. I'm just going to paint these uh, as, as best as I can, trying to soften and reduce the amount of blue spill that we got from uh, the operation that the iOS, uh, the iOS did for us. So I'm just making that quick adjustment here. 
Maybe I can bring it a little bit bigger. And I'm gonna try to paint, taking off a little bit of that blue spill that we see here at the edge. Of course, sometimes you have graphics on top and you may need to um, turn off some layers to be able to see things that you've created yourself, right? To be able to see that um, the talent layer uh, sort of isolated. But this is just to give you like a quick example of what we can do. So right now that I've painted, I can zoom back and the effect already looks much better. And once again, I can also go into Gaussian Blur and add a little bit of blur, like see if I really crank it, it comes back. So even if I do about 2% uh, of blur, it's going to do a much better job on that mask. So I believe that's it for this tutorial. I hope you have enjoyed and I hope that you can take this technique and make several different pictures for yourself. You can create your own avatars, you can take photos and do all sorts of uh, um, graphic effects as well and create uh, some really interesting things in your own time. So if you did like this video, a like would be super appreciated as well as make sure to hit the subscribe button for more content like this. And this is all to make you a better digital illustrator every single day. Now on the right side of the screen, there's more content for you guys to watch. One is my latest upload and the other one is a video that YouTube's recommending you to check it out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.